when I'm not gearing my entire musical career towards reading German product manuals through a vocoder. I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. You should sue Ed Sheeran. He used this song in his latest album, Go Check Blow by Ed Sheeran and Bruno Mars. I'm saying this for real, man. Effing music parasites. It's the same chords, it's the same progression, and tempo too, dude. So some of you may not know this, but uh, Ed Sheeran and Bruno Mars stole one of my songs. So I've had one original song that has gotten, I guess, some kind of amount of viewership. Uh, a song called Dragonfly has like 60,000 views, which is good for me for original music. And uh, it sounds like this. That was released like two, three years ago. Last year, Ed Sheeran released a song that sounds like this. So we've got this. And we've got this. Now I've known about this for a while. A lot of people have alerted me to it. Uh, I have not done a video on it yet because number one, I do not care. Number two, I think it's hard to do a video like this without coming off as a salty, jealous nobody who is just upset about some nonsense that probably never happened. Number three, I also don't care. But I was talking to a friend of mine about this and it's like, you know what, I could do a video about it, but the twist of the video is that I actually originally stole the song myself. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about. Uh, first of all, I called up Ed Sheeran to try to get his comment, and this is the conversation we had. Hey, Ed, this looks uh, this looks pretty bad. Is there anything you want to say to me? Oi, who is this, mate? So that didn't really get anywhere, but uh, here we go. So here's the Dragonfly riff. Sounds like this. And here's the Ed Sheeran riff. Okay, so albeit his is actually a half step down, okay? So it's a little bit different. It's in uh, E flat, D sharp minor pentatonic. Mine is in E minor pentatonic, and this is the whole point of it. The pentatonic scale is five notes. It's kind of like the sound of rock and roll. E minor pentatonic specifically is kind of the thing that everybody learns first, myself included. I never had formal guitar lessons, so everything that I learned was just listening to other songs and kind of like learning the same stock riffs that everybody else does. Okay, so if we could just go through like the notes of the E minor pentatonic scale and then kind of add that blue note in between. Just playing them in order already kind of sounds like... Now, okay, so that's the Dragonfly riff. Again, nothing against that. I love playing. It's like my favorite song to play live, for sure. But it's a rock music minor pentatonic riff. Like, you can play a lot of songs in E minor pentatonic, and they're going to sound a lot like that. Like, uh... <laughs> Okay, so Sunshine of Your Love, that is definitely one of the first songs that I ever learned. In fact, Jack Bruce, who came up with that riff, even admitted that he wrote that riff after listening to Jimi Hendrix. Like, live concert, heard Hendrix, went home, wrote that riff. He probably heard that riff listening to Jimi. Jimmy probably heard it listening to something else. This stuff is like decades, decades old. And while when I was making that song Dragonfly, I definitely was not consciously thinking of anything. I was just jamming, just noodling around, came up with a riff, saw it, thought it sounded cool, tracked it, added drums, turned it into a song, right? So there was definitely nothing consciously in my mind about like, oh, this sounds like this or whatever. But I think a lot of people who have tried writing music or people who continuously write their own music can attest to There'll be a lot of times when you're like, oh, this sounds great. And then you come back to it tomorrow and it's like, this is an exact ripoff of a different song. Just because I wasn't consciously thinking something doesn't mean that I was ripping it off. Like I wasn't thinking of Sunshine of Your Love in that. But again, so many riffs, specifically in E minor pentatonic, end up sounding like that. 
Yeah. Now, the execution of which, like, what you do with it is kind of the more important thing. That's why I don't care what anybody else does with riff like that. Take it. Make it your own. Do your thing. and Just rock it out. I'm super happy with how that sounds. But you could really just replace, like, a lot of stuff, like... <laughs> So anything that you do can be kind of shoehorned into a rock music E minor pentatonic riff. So I don't know if they stole it or not. I'm assuming the conversation probably went something like this. Hey, Ed, have you checked out this guy, Sean Daniel, and his medium-sized YouTube channel? Oi, mate, his original music is something we should totally rip off. Agreed. Let's see if we can do this and try to steal some of that medium heat that he has on him. Oh, I'm so jealous of him. I know, but for real, like, how does he hang out with all those beautiful women? What's his secret? I don't know. It must be something to do with that vocoder. In fact, just yesterday, I posted a video talking about recording a different song that starts off like... <laughs> Okay, and everybody's like, oh, I like that better the first time. It was Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Ohio, whatever that song was. I have to admit, I've never consciously heard that song from beginning to end. I know the song they're referencing. I looked it up at something like... Which I think is a lot different than, you know... It's all the same stuff, you know what I mean? Like, there's only so many combinations of diatonic, pentatonic chord things that you can come up with, and what you do with it is really, you know, kind of up to you. So, in summation, I don't really think a super mega successful pop star stole one of my songs, but I don't know, maybe you should be the judge and let me know what you think. I missed a discount on the full fingerstyle class. Will there be another discount soon? Absolutely. So I made a fingerstyle guitar class. It's taking you from like intro, absolute beginner, into like intermediate stuff, teaches a lot of songs. Uh, it's definitely hours and hours of content. And through the pandemic, we've been making it super cheap as long as the coupons will last for us. So I'll do another one. Five day coupon, get it for $15. Definitely worth it. Helps me out a lot. Check it out. You are the worst person to learn from. <laughs> the absolute worst? <laughs> That's pretty bad, man. I feel bad about that one. Salty Blue's comment. Don't buy a Les Paul. You're enough of a poser already. Don't make it worse by getting a Gibson. <laughs> I guess that's fair. I have two Gibsons, by the way. I have an SG and a 333. Does that still make me any more of a poser than I already am? Can playing thumb chords dislocate my thumb? So I'm notoriously not a thumb player, uh, so I'm probably not the person to ask. I don't think you're really gonna dislocate your thumb. I feel like you'll know if you're about to dislocate your thumb. <laughs> it's not even like, oh, this is, this is really comfortable. Oh my God, I dislocated my thumb. Try it, if it's uncomfortable, don't do it. If it's putting any kind of pressure or pain in your hand, just stop doing it, no matter what you're doing. It shouldn't be a painful experience uh, to be practicing guitar. Now, if you get, you know, blisters and stuff like that, that's one thing that you can work through. But I don't think you're gonna accidentally dislocate your thumb. That being said, I've been doing a lot more uh, kind of like blues, finger style stuff, and uh, I'm kind of coming around to seeing the benefits of being a thumb player. So I, if I can change, you can change. We can all change. That was supposed to be, be me doing a rendition of the Rocky IV speech. Uh, off the top of my head in relation to thumb playing. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Beatles never slayed, except for a day in the life. So this was on the cover that I posted with Katie, uh, In My Life by the Beatles, really worked out well. Check that out if you haven't already. And also kind of in response to the revelation last week of all the bands that I don't like, which a lot of people said that I hated. I don't really listen to Pink Floyd. I don't really, you know, it doesn't vibe with me. Oh, you hate Pink Floyd? What's wrong with you, you salty weirdo? You probably don't like the Beatles then either. That was another thing too, because I don't like, I don't love Pink Floyd. I don't like the Beatles. That's messed up. And then to come and say the Beatles don't slay. The Beatles totally slay. Helter Skelter slay. There's like a ton of slaying Beatles songs out there. So shame on you for first assuming that I don't like the Beatles just because I don't think they're the greatest band to ever play. That is one thing about Beatles fans I might talk more about in the future. If you don't admit the Beatles are the greatest band in history, then you hate the Beatles. <laughs> There's like no in between. You can't just say the Beatles were great and iconic and have nothing bad to say about them. But if you don't admit that they're the greatest band ever, then you hate the Beatles and you're just a salty weirdo, like I said before. So you can't really please everybody. 
For listening homework this week, I'm going to throw you to a new Shaky Graves track. Love Shaky Graves. He's had a huge influence on my playing. I plan on ripping off all of his licks and stuff in future songs, so stay tuned for all that. And uh, go shake, go show Shaky some love. Uh, make sure you check out the Masterclass discount in the link below. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.